Hello, and welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have another amazing guest to introduce to you now. Lori Ballou is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, an ADAPT certified functional health coach, and GEMA licensed holistic practitioner. As a kid growing up in the San Gabriel Valley of Los Angeles, California, Lori loved all of the processed cookies, desserts, and ice cream, and especially loved the frosted animal cookies the most. Before she knew it, she was getting chubby and reached 200 pounds, as well as suffering from depression. Now, as a health coach, she helps women in particular who are goal getters to reverse metabolic dysfunction that leads to weight gain with a functional and a holistic approach. She helps her clients lose that stubborn inflammatory fat, reset their metabolism, and take back control of their bodies and their brains. Lori believes that the biggest gap in weight loss these days is not from some fancy pill or procedure, but it is in in actuality discovering one's health and having fun taking care of oneself while also losing weight. She believes that to lose weight, what we really need to do is learn how to live healthier lifestyles. You can find out more about Lori by going to her website at www.loribaloo.com or on her Instagram at Lori Ballou Weight Loss. Lori Ballou, what an absolute honor it is to welcome you to Boundless Body Radio. Well, thank you. And it was good to kind of listen to that again. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did write that. <laughs> <laughs> I I did a very poor job reading that. I stumbled through a few times. To be fair, there's a lot of really big words in there, which just to me tells me that you're very, very smart and educated. And I just had a tough time getting through such big words. So... <laughs> Very well decorated. I love it. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes I forget about that, you know, because I get so excited about everything that's happening. And, you know, we just need to look at this as a lifestyle and kind of transition from the diet mindset into how can we support our body and have the best health we want. And then we got to look at how to do that. It's not just diet. It's not dieting. We have to program our body. To have weight loss. I, I love that. I can't wait to deep dive into that with you today. Um, I love your approach and you have such a unique story and we're definitely going to get to your story. But just because this is a little bit kind of more recent and really fresh on my mind, I wanted to just chat with you about a recent experience that I had. Um, at the time of this recording, I've just gotten back from Austin, Texas, where I attended the Hack Your Health uh, 2024 conference. Uh, the conference used to be called KetoCon and this is the year that they rebranded away from the keto name and over to Hack Your Health, which I want to ask you about that as well. Um, um, but I, the first question I have for you, I know this is such a big part of your story. How, how much do you recommend people out there who are searching for answers try to find gatherings and conferences and community like this to get together with like-minded people? I think it's huge. I was outside grounding, practicing that very message and thinking about that. I was, I was like working on my, you know, what I'm going to talk about today on this podcast. And I'm like, that's what got me excited. If you can pull on excitement, find your tribe, find like-minded individuals that you want to have the health that they have. And you, and you take the, you know, they're already the N in one study. They've already done it. They've got the results. They know what to do. You can get excited and follow those people. And when you follow people that have those results, you get those results. Because if you're just going to follow people eating ice cream and pizza, you're going to have a body that is sick and, and overweight. But if you follow people who are already understanding and getting excited about lifestyle change, that's where the power is. And that's what helped me because I did follow um, Dave Asprey with the Bulletproof Conference. That's where I started to really turn around and understand that I needed to do this and that I'm doing this, but I got excited. I followed somebody who was successful. And so I binge listen. And the more I binge listen, the more I learned. And the more my brain turned on, the more I got excited. So that's how I created my health in the end. That's the end. It's not quite the beginning, but that's where I was, you know, maybe that's the middle because that was the beginning of my lifestyle journey or the second half of my lifestyle journey. Cause there's some bits and pieces there. Cause it did take me about 25 years, but I think it's, the most important thing, if we can go to places like the KetoCon, the Health Hack Your Health, go to any of those conferences, get empowered. Because if you can't get empowered, you're going to end up in, a, in front of a doctor in a doctor's office and he's going to tell you to take these drugs and that there's nothing you can do and that you can't reverse your obesity. You can reverse obesity, but you have to hang out with the people who are doing it and who understand it and who are doing it. Yeah. That's power. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. More powerful than a pill. 
yeah, more powerful than a pill or a procedure. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And this this conference was um, it's kind of unique and interesting because it's not just you know the who's who in our world in the low carbohydrate space and the people making the presentations, but it's also very much consumer driven. And so as you're walking around this conference, you see there's a lot of people that are not quite to metabolic health. They've got a lot of weight to lose or conditions you can tell they're dealing with. And so in one sense, I think it's really cool to have everybody together and at least if nothing else, just to show you that this way of life is not so isolating. There's other people that are trying to do this exactly. and you're not the mm -hmm. only, you're not the only weirdo making weird orders in a fast food joint when, you know, you have to get a meal or whatever. Like it, it's kind of nice to have that community to know like, okay, I do have support. I do have like-minded people. You know, I think it's critical because you just don't know what you don't know. And so when you start hanging out with people who have the knowledge and they're giving you case studies and they're telling you what can happen, that's when you can actually start changing your brain because we have to we have to change our brain, but we have to nourish our brain. So to get the weight loss, you got to look at how can I fix my brain so my brain will work for me so that I can actually go forward and take that action. But if your brain's broken and you can't think or get excited, then it's hard to step forward into the next thing to do. So when you actually look at food as information to your body and look at the people around you who are doing it and then try it for 30 days, you your brain's on fire. You're going to if you fix your brain that's what's going to get you the weight loss. That's what's going to help you reverse the obesity. But you have to start with the brain and that starts with food. You got to program your body. It's so nice to get that mental boost and like realize that you didn't even know what it was like to live with anxiety or brain fog and all that stuff because you're, you're your own body and you don't even know it yeah. until you get on the other side of yeah. it. I had, I had depression and that's what lifted once I started a keto diet and took out all the fruit yep. and my brain turned back on brain fog lifted my eyes cleared my eyes were wonky I didn't even know my eyes I kept rubbing my eyes like why are my eyes blurry and so once I started a keto diet my eyes started working you That's know amazing. and I always think back I'm like oh my gosh I can't believe like my brain started working again and it was at that moment that I could get excited and step forward into the first 20 pounds of weight loss yeah. that's what does it Oh, that's not awesome. a diet. Yep. I love it. Again, we'll, we'll get into that. I can't wait to hear about that. Um, one more thing mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you really like, okay, so th this conference in particular is run by Robin Schweitzer. She's a sweetheart, very nice woman. She does a great job at the conference, um, branded away from the name keto wanted to kind of step away from that and change the name again to hack your health. Um, so it wasn't just specifically about low carbohydrate diets or ketogenic diets. Um, it, it was, you know, there was a lot of like products and light therapies and saunas and cold plunges and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, what is your opinion these days on specifically the word keto? It kind of seems like there's this interesting connotation that's kind of come when so many people have done keto and tried keto and what is keto and is this food keto or not keto? Like there, there's this whole thing about the word keto and some people are, you know, justifiably trying to step away from it. I'm just curious about what you think about that, like in, in 2024. Well, I think it's because the medical system and um, social media are making it sound negative and scary and dangerous and people are unsure of what to do and um and it's like keto is a diet well it's not that you want to get on a diet you keto is a process it's a metabolic process and so what you want to look at it is not just and i've kind of gotten away from the name too only because i work on social media i don't want to scare anybody off it's not that it has to be so restrictive it's just that it is a metabolic process. If your metabolism is broken, what are you going to use to fix your metabolism? So you don't have to use the word keto. Keto is a ketogenic diet. That is something that our ancestors did in winter to survive winter or when there was famine. And so it's just been broken down. It's something that was used for epilepsy. It's used today for children. And so it is a very powerful process to help your brain function. If you've got a brain dysfunction, you do want to be more in a keto diet. But we don't really have to be keto strictly at a 70% fat to get the health that we need. We just need to take out the processed foods. That's how you start. You take out the ultra processed foods and just get yourself under 100 carbs. Take out the foods that are poisoning your body. Reduce that sugar load down to fruit. Reduce, you know, get the wheat out of your diet. If you can hack those two things, then you're hacking your health. I mean, Dr. William Davis, he saved my life too because it was his book that got me off of wheat. You know, and Gary Tobbs is why we get fat. If we just get this information and start applying it, you don't have to look at this as a keto diet, but you want to look at it as an ancestral health, whole foods diet plan. 
because it's not a diet. It's something you want to transition into your life. And yeah, it's going to hack your life. It's going to hack your, whether you live or die yeah. is what it's going to do for you. And you don't have to look at it as something that's strict and scary. People are starting to see that word as something that's too strict and too scary. Don't look at it that way. How can you break it down and look at this as the natural diet of our species now my cat i found a bunny tail on the ground this is just a story I, I found a bunny tail on the ground today and i know that that was a bunny tail and that that bunny was eaten fully it's just like i don't know i think my cat's a snake just abs he just completely absorbed that bunny and he'd done it before and i just found a bunny tail each time and this cat is carnivore and he needs to eat that and so that's our ancestral diet. That's what we need to eat. So even if we, you know, try to domesticate a cat, that's their natural diet. And we got to look back at ancestral health. What is our natural diet? We can survive on cereal grains and carbohydrates, but that is starvation food. And people ate them. They eat tree, tree root, tree bark. Where they ate whatever they could fill up their stomachs and make them live until they could find the food they needed to thrive. But you won't thrive if you're eating starvation food. What can you, our body is made from meat. We have to eat the meat. And so it's not about looking at a term and being on that term. That's why I've named my method the holistic low carb method is because there is so much more than just diet that's involved in it. You got to hack your health. I've become a biohacker. That's how I've succeeded at not just losing 100 pounds, but keeping 100 pounds off. Because it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle journey that you want to create. Yeah. you got to hack your health. <laughs> exactly. It's a great term. Well, I love it. And um, yeah, I really appreciate your insight as far as that goes. I, I had the observation at this conference that I wish more people would know that about the term mm -hmm. keto in this kind of world. Because if, if I were an attendee um, and I, I didn't know what I know about nutrition now, if I was just starting my weight loss journey, I would have attended several different kind of either breakouts or talks or, or activities that had really conflicting information, even though it's all like kind of in the same ballpark. Like this one guy says that I need all these leafy greens and plant nutrients for some health. Uh, these other people are all carnivore and they say, I don't. This person said, you need to have a lot of fat for your hormones as you're aging, going through menopause. And this other lady says, no, you actually need to focus on the protein. You need the fat to be really low. So even within this world of a lot of people trying low carb, there's so many of this like minutiae that we get caught up in and like, oh, are you fasting for 12 hours? Or are you fasting for 14 hours? Like at the end of the day, like, come on, like we're, we're not really getting to like the, the message that you kind of alluded to there, which is like, yeah, we should probably be spending some time in ketosis. And if we have a lifestyle that aligns with how we've evolved, that will naturally happen regardless of what the exact particulars are, you know? Yep. And that's pretty much what I've discovered over the last eight years, because I believe I started keto. It's getting harder to remember. I started my keto diet at the Bulletproof Conference, and that was about eight years ago, because I actually reference it towards I'd just gone on a hike at the Grand Canyon. And soon after that, I started at the diet at the Bulletproof Conference and started changing my life. If you start making the changes, and then over the last eight years, what I've done is fine tuned everything that worked for me as a woman over 50 and all the lifestyle factors that work. And I listen, I'm a voracious reader. I listen to all the podcasts. I'm binge listening to your podcast. I'm learning from so many people. I'm loving all of it. And every time I pick up a new piece of information, I stick it in my brain. And, you know, and I've got this puzzle growing in there and it's about everything you address. Yeah, should we be carnivore? Should we eat more vegetables? Do we need more fat? Do we need more protein? What exactly do we need for our body? Each person's a little different. That's why I run functional diagnostic labs with my clients to find out what's going on in your body. If you've got, you know, dysfunction and inflammation in your gut, you might need something different than another person. And so if your digestion's not functioning, we need to look at digestion. And so this is information. It's kind of like, you know, taking your car in for a checkup. You got to take your body in for a checkup, see what direction you need to send your body in, what type of food you need at that very moment. If you've had depression, you need to actually have a little bit more fat. So I have a higher fat keto diet because I need fat to run my brain. Because otherwise, if I like, like Robin, I was listening to her story. And, you know, if we need more fat to, to manage not to have bipolarism or to not have depression, then we need to be able to manage stress. So if you're a woman over 50, and you've got a lot of stress and your hormones on function, you might need more fat. And so yeah, I agree with that. But at the same time, as a woman over 50, I agree that we need the right amount of protein. And so with my method, the way I look at it is I try to get my women to focus on 30 grams of protein minimally, because they're not eating enough. You need 30 grams of protein minimally at each meal. 
not snacking on a beef stick in between, but you eat that food all at once. So it's not about eating a beef stick. It's about eating six beef sticks. Is that going to equal 30 grams of protein? Because you want to build muscle, protect your bones, protect your muscle, protect your brain as a woman over 50. And that's the focus that I'm using. So, you know, I listen to everybody who says, eat more protein, don't eat any fat. You know, they say, don't eat bulletproof coffee. Well, that saved my life. I'm not going to tell my clients not to drink bulletproof coffee unless their body doesn't need it. If they're fine without it, I'm going to meet them where they're at. And I'm going to help them figure out what exactly they need to do for their body and their brain. And if they need a bulletproof coffee in the morning to stop their hunger and manage their, you're, they're going to lose weight. They're losing two a pounds a, a pound a week. If you can drink the fat and lose the weight, your body will function better. We need fat to absorb our nutrients. And we need fat actually for digestion. And there's a lot of the tests that I'm running are showing that the, the digestion isn't functioning because there's not enough fat. And so those are some things that I look at to see where you need to go next. And so I had bulletproof coffee today so my brain can function. And I'm going to, when I break my fast, I'm going to eat probably 50 grams of protein so that I could build muscle and I'm not going to waste my protein. I'm got to the point where if I'm going to eat, I'm going to make sure that the food I'm eating is programming my body and making me build muscle. So I, I'm, well, I'm 61 years old and I'm building muscle and I love it. And so it's not about being skinny. We want to look beyond the skinny narratives and figure out how we can program our body with the right food for that specific individual. And that's what, that, that's where that puzzle piece has been growing in my brain. I've listened to everybody out there. I know about the fat. I know about the protein. I understand all of it. And I know that the studies show if we eat more protein, we lose more weight. But we also have to manage our stress. We have to keep our cortisols and our adrenals balanced. And so sometimes we do need the fat. And so, But each person is in a different spot as to what they need to do. And so that's where the circadian balance and the rhythm of all of this comes into play. And that's what I do. It's a holistic low-carb method. And it involves diet, rest, exercise, stress management, toxics environment, circadian balance, movement, movement, movement. We got to have sunlight, all of that, you know, about, but it's not just diet. You can't just do diet. You have to figure out how to hack your health per your individual body, what your body needs so that it functions the way you want it to. So you can live your best life and feel radiant. Yeah. Wow. I've, that's how I look at it. That's really well explained. That's great. Um, I, I really appreciate that. Unfortunately, you lost all credibility by telling our listeners that you are 61. Clearly, you're not 61. They can tell <laughs> from listening to your voice, you're probably 45. Definitely not 61. Anybody who watch you will be able to tell. So unfortunately, you've lost all credibility. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, you know, I've got a lot of energy and, um, you know, I'm dating at 61 because I've been divorced for a year. And it's like the men yeah, don't fantastic. seem to understand that you got to take me out for walks and I've got a lot of energy. It's I can't just sit still, you know. You <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's fantastic. Well, since we kind of bypassed this and we've gotten bits and pieces, I really appreciate. Can we hear your own journey to health? It sounded like you had to get, you know, kind of very unhealthy doing what a lot of us were probably doing a few decades ago. Um, can you tell us about your journey, how you became unhealthy to begin with? And what were the steps and, and ways that you were finally able to break yourself out of that? Well, I was basically raised on a um, processed food diet. My mom didn't know the difference. She was busy working. And, um, you know, we we were eating animal crackers and, you know, our dad would fix dinner at the end of the day, but I was the one that was reacting to wheat and sugar more than anybody else. And so I ended up having obesity in fifth or sixth grade. So I started gaining weight at a young age and I had um, depression. So I was the only one out of seven that was gaining weight. And um, my mom at one point put me on a, on the Atkins diet. She said I did really good with amino acids. I remember eating um, keto bread or you know, Atkins bread. So she did help me reset my metabolism. I dropped down to like 150 pounds and I was able to maintain that over time, but I would just, you know, be in, pretty much be on a diet most of the time. And so if I wasn't actually dieting, I was gaining weight. So I was either starving my body or I was gaining weight. And so at one point, um, my son was about eight and I came in from an outing with my son and my then husband was sitting on the sofa and without even looking at me, he asked me, when am I going to lose the weight? I was on 225 pounds. I had asthma, allergies, depression, anxiety, PCOS, which is polycystic fibros, polycystic ovary syndrome. And my doctor just laughed at me when he diagnosed me with that and he didn't even tell me what to do. Wow. And I wasn't living my best life. I was just um, uncomfortable in my body. 
But that kind of just jump started me, kind of made me want to make the changes. And I wanted to have another child. And so I did, I hit the books. And at that time, it was um, about 25 years ago, it was the fat free era. So I read Susan Powder, I read all the fat free books, I jumped on the bandwagon, started exercising, I did lose 60 pounds, I did have two more children, but I gained all the weight back. I never felt healthy. I never got rid of the asthma, I got sicker. You know, I was pre diabetic that whole time, because that's what PCOS is too. It's just pre diabetes, it's insulin resistance. I didn't know at the time. And um, got up again to 200 pounds. And I was just trying to keep the weight off from 185 to 200. And so I just, I did all the diets. I was on a merry go round of weight loss, weight gain, never felt healthy. So no matter what, the diets don't work. That's what I discovered. And so finally, I started reading about functional nutrition, you know, ancestral health. I started buying all the cookbooks. I started exploring that lifestyle. And it did make a difference. I started to feel better. I tried to use supplements to fight asthma, but they, you know, they might help with the symptoms, but they never worked on the underlying root cause of inflammation. My body had inflammation. I was insulin resistant. And so that's why I had asthma. So what I, what I ended up doing was um, reading more books. I was started working at a natural food store. I was in charge of the books. Once I found out I was a book reader, I was read all the books, I'd buy the books and I'd absorb all this information. Like, why do we get fat? You know, the Wheat Belly book by Dr. William Davis, Cordain's book, uh, Rob Wolf. I started reading Paleo Nutrition. I started getting excited. I started experimenting. I went on the HCG diet. Everybody thought I was gonna die. Oh my God, you can't do that. You're gonna die. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, your brain needs sugar. I'm like, no, I'm going to do this. And so I lost all the weight. Everybody wanted to do that. Everybody got on the bandwagon. We sold it to all the people that came into the store. It was just a really interesting thing. But you gain all the weight back. As soon as you turn your insulin response back on, all the weight comes back. That's what I discovered too. And so I couldn't, I finally got off the wheat. William Davis, um, Wheat Belly Book, I got off the wheat. Once you read that, you won't want to eat wheat. So that's a really powerful book. And then all of a sudden there was, um, you know, I was pretty much down to honey, but I could feel my insulin switch come on. I could feel out of control. I didn't like how I felt. And one time I was doing like the raw, my, I had a raw vegan at the store. Um, the nutritionist was a raw vegan. And so we had some raw food, brought in through the store to sell. And there was this um, apple pie that had, it was apple pie with honey. It was raw, it was, it was nutritious, right? <laughs> I drove two hours to go buy that pie and I bought two of them and ate them all up because when your sugar switch is turned on, you will seek out the food that you think is healthy for you or that you wanna eat. And you have no control over this. And so have you ever found yourself getting in the car and driving for you know donuts or driving out for um, ice cream? I did it. Your frozen yogurt. I thought it was healthy. You know, I, fresh bagels. If you get them fresh, they're healthier for you, right? So if you go and buy them fresh bagels, then they're healthier than the ones in the store. I myself was convinced of all that. But so it took me a long time to get off the food sensitivities, but I got off the wheat, finally got off the honey that was down to fruit. So I, that's where the Bulletproof Conference comes in. I finally went to a Bulletproof Conference because while I was working in the natural food store, we would go to the, um, Expo West Natural Food Expo. And I got more into discovering about the Bulletproof Diet and ended up going to the conference. And I met or I attended a lecture, a 10 year brain cancer survivor, a gentleman that is a body type scientist, and he was on the keto diet. So he was surviving brain cancer because of his diet. So anyways, I talked to him afterwards, and I must have asked him a question about fruit. He took one look at me says, you can't have fruit. I'm like, okay, that very day I transitioned into keto or into low carb because it's an, just an ancestral diet. I took away all the processed food. I took away all the fruit. That's when my brain turned back on. That's when my vision cleared up. That's, when, that's what saved my life. It saved my life because I could get excited about life and I could get to the next level of the health that I needed to hack. So I dropped 10 pounds, got my vision back, went back to school, recertified, you know, I had to grow. I had to change who I was. And getting into these programs helped me get and pull myself out. Of, I was repressed. I was, you know, I had anxiety. I had depression. I had to rechange everything and grow my brain. I had to regrow me. 
I had to recreate the body that I wanted to live in, but I had to recreate my brain first. And so that is a big step to do. And if anybody has depression, you need to know that if you're eating wheat and having sugar, your brain is insulin resistant and it cannot get the energy it needs to function. And so that's part of the problem. That's right. Oh, I just so excited with Dr. Chris Palmer, you know, Harvard trained psychiatrist changing the world with low carb lifestyle or low carb living keto diets to reduce bipolar, depression, schizophrenia, and to get people their life back. It's amazing. It gave me my life back. So I had depression. So if you had depression, this is the only way to treat it. Not with a drug. Drug keeps you sick. Doesn't solve the underlying condition. And so that's what empowered me to go forward. And, you know, I only lost 20 pounds that first time. I had to reset my gut the rest of my health, I needed to let my body heal hormonally after 50 years of, you know, a bad diet, my body had to correct itself. So I stalled out for 20, for three years, I didn't lose any more weight. People would have stopped. Oh, keto doesn't work for me or low carb doesn't work for me. I tried it. It doesn't work. If you're not gaining the weight back and you're feeling better than you've ever felt before, it is working. Your body is getting cardiometabolic health happening. You are remodeling the inside of your body. You are reducing visceral fat. My visceral fat is under eight. We want it as low as we can because we don't want inflammatory fat. And that's the first thing that goes away from your neck and your face. If you want to feel attractive, you've got to reduce the visceral fat that's on the outside of your skin and around your heart. And so that's all happening. And so if you're not losing weight, it just means like, what's the next thing to do? Let's hack it. What can you do? I needed to hack my gut. I needed gut health. And so there is where podcasts come in. You listen, you get empowered, you grow your knowledge. And then all of a sudden, you know what to do next. Oh, let me try this. I want to do this. Let's see what happens. And eventually, you'll get to recreate the body you want to live in. And it works and the weight will come off. And so. I I had started at 185 and I'm down to 130. I'm back and forth between 129 and 131 right now. But basically it took me eight years to get where I'm at because I had to remodel and change my body. Some people can do it faster. I needed more fat. I needed to manage my brain. I couldn't do it super fast, but I had stress. And so if you've got a lot of stress, you've got to manage your hormones. And as a woman over 50, we have to manage our hormones and we might need a little bit more fat to do that. And that's why I have a balance of how much fat to protein I need. And once you tune into your body, you know what you need on a daily basis. I mean, if I'm hungry, but I don't want to eat something or I'm too busy, I'll just open up a can of sardines. That scares the hell out of people. I'm like, you can eat. You either don't eat or you can eat a can of sardines and just feel amazing. (laughs) Sometimes it's just a cold hamburger patty, but I keep it simple. Other times I'll cook more elaborate meals, but what I'm doing is nourishing my brain so that I can function with my body. And that's why when you listen to other people, they might have, they they may say you don't need, you know, a lot of fat. But if you're listening to someone who's in her 30s or 40s and not eating a lot of fat and who is doing more protein, that might be working for her, but that may not be what you need. And so I understand all of that because I have this lived experience with functional nutrition as a practitioner and running labs to see what's going on underneath the hood to help people figure out what they need to do. So as I work more and more with people, I kind of tune into exactly what they need. And then once I hear where they are and what they need and what their labs look like, I'm kind of able to customize what they need to do with their diet. And so some people need more fat, some people need more protein, some people just need to digest it all so they can absorb all of their food. It all comes down to what we absorb in our body and how we utilize it. But um, that's basically my story. Do I need to go into any more depth or did I miss anything? That was amazing. No, it was a really cool journey. And I think important, the most important thing to take away from that is for people to be patient. You're right. You could have stopped at any given time. Three years is a very long time. You need to consider all those non-scale victories. You mentioned the weight loss around the neck and the face. This is why I tell people one of the Mm -hmm. best things you can do when you start this diet is take a picture. Don't, you don't even have to share it with anybody, but take a picture. You'll be stunned in weeks how that changes in that area of the body. So yeah, just to your stay inflammation patient. will come off your face. But you know, this is about restoring the right metabolism, you know, redu- reducing your insulin resistance, fixing your metabolism, fixing your thyroid. I had a lab work done last 
um, December and my lab work looks amazing. My thyroid's not out of whack. I take iodine, but you don't want to take iodine unless you're doing the right things to take to support the iodine that you need in your body because you have to detox from bromide. You have to detox from fluoride. You need to pull in the salt. You need to actually get your body functioning so that it can actually utilize iodine. And you need to be aware of how your body is managed because you have to kind of do that yourself because the medical system won't help you. And so that's another thing that you have to hack. You have to hack your nutrient levels and you need to discover what your nutrient levels need to be. And that's an experimentation or you work with somebody like me who could help you fast track it. And so that we can look at your hair tissue mineral analysis to find out what's missing. Like, you know, that's what's going on with me. I ran another one. I just got the labs yesterday. I was so excited. I finally broke my calcium shell. So I had calcium. You could take calcium, but if you're not absorbing it, it's not going to do anything for your body. So mine was stuck. I wasn't absorbing it. My aluminum is too high. I have metal in my body. We all have metal and toxins in our body. Do you know what it is? Do you know if you're absorbing your calcium? And, you know, if your sodium and potassium levels are tanked, you have adrenals that are in dysfunction. And so I also look at that because if your adrenals are exhausted, you need a different diet than somebody else who has better adrenals. And maybe you don't need as much strenuous exercise, but maybe just more gentle movement. I mean, I don't do strenuous. I'm still building muscle because I focus on protein, but I focus on fat from my brain so my body can function the way I need it to. And so those are just, um, it's just, you got to piece it together. That's, that's why I really do like that hack your health. You just have to piece it together and not get scared about a, a term. Yeah. Like you were saying, how people get scared of term because the, you know, the, the um, like the media is just trying to make it sound like a scary thing. Right. It's just our ancestral diet. Yep. Yep. Very simple. Like you can't eating, eating that rabbit, you know, yep. it knows. Totally. It's a savage cat, by the way. I love it. <laughs> Very cool. Um, I since we kind of <laughs> since we kind of touched on this a little bit, um, and you're just such a pro at all the different diets. I did a presentation recently about this as well. Calories in, calories out. The idea that calories matter for weight loss and and ignoring all this other amazing stuff that we're talking about, like you, healing your gut, healing mental disorders, like all these amazing things. Let's throw all of that off to the side for now and just talk about weight loss, calories in, calories out. When somebody comes to you and they already know exactly what they need to do, they need to move more and they need to eat less. How do you help people reframe that idea that is still so pervasive out in the community that, that, that we, calories in, calories out. What what every Coca Cola vending machine says. You need to balance what you eat, drink, and do. Can you, how do you help people understand that that's not actually where the truth is? Again, for for weight loss in particular. So the way I always like to frame it is you you need to look at insulin resistance and your blood sugar. As long as you've got glucose in your blood sugar in your blood, any kind of glucose, all carbohydrates break down into glucose and they go into your blood. So as long as you have that in your body, you are going to be a sugar store. You're going to be storing fat instead of burning it. And so when we want to look at the quality of the food we're eating to, to not have sugar in our blood. And so when you fat and protein don't add sugar to your blood. And so when you eat the foods that don't have sugar, then you actually don't have sugar in your blood. And so this is not about the calories in. Because if they're not causing you to store fat, they're actually helping you burn fat. You want to look at food as which food's going to help you burn fat versus store fat. And that's why I like to look at this as flipping the sugar switch off. Because if you look at this as um, what calories do for your body at the hormonal level, because it's not about calories in, calories out, because you could eat 100 grams of a Snicker bar or 100 grams of a broccoli, and that broccoli is going to help you detox and have a better gut so you can lose weight more naturally. But that sugar is going to, from the candy bar, is going to store as sugar and you can't burn it. And so you can exercise as much as you want, but as long as there's sugar in your blood, you're going to burn that sugar that's in the blood before you burn the fat in your body. And so when you're actually using movement to just empower your body, to give your body signals that you want to be metabolically active and that you're actually need to be act that you want to be active, your body will work for you. So it's almost like the movement is actually creating stronger mitochondria and helping your body function the way it's meant to. Like I like to follow Dr. Sean O'Mara and he's very big at sprinting because if you sprint, it's like you're mimicking nature. 
like we would run from danger, but would only be for a moment or two. And then your body would actually burn the visceral fat because it needs instant energy. And so you don't have to jog for 10 miles. That actually creates more visceral fat because your body doesn't understand why you want to create that much oxidative stress. <laughs> and so when you just do moments of exercise and get out and ground and use your, and you'll plug yourself back into earth, you actually program in your body for weight loss. And that's how movement helps. And that's how sprinting can help because it reduces inflammatory fat. But um, the calories in, calories out thing is, is it's, a, it's not about that because food is information to your body. And you want to look at food as programming your body for weight loss. You want to be training your body to burn fat by being a fat burner, not a sugar burner. As long as you are eating, a, you know, working on weight loss as a calories in calories that approach, you're actually, if you do lose weight from that, you're losing fat, bone and muscle. And then you're using willpower you're starving your body, you're not giving your body information. And then when you stop doing that, and you think you're because you're on a diet, you're going to gain it all back, but you gain only the fat back. When you look at this um, process as a hormonal process, when you're losing the weight on the hormonal process, there's no sugar in your blood. So you can tap into your body fat and burn the body fat. And that's why I love to say, you know, flip the sugar switch on or flip the sugar switch off, because you get to control that. And so the more that you're a fat burner, the more you're going to actually create a, a, a better metabolic rate in your body, you're going to set your weight point as you lose. That was what was wrong with HCG. You would never really reset your metabolism. And so when you're on a low calorie diet, you're you're just like pressing it and kind of like squashing it down that fat cell, you're kind of squashing that fat cell down, and then it rebounds back. And so what you want to do is delete the fat, you want to burn the fat, you want to train your body to be metabolically active. And so that if you want a little bit of sugar, your body will burn it fast, but you could flip right back into being a sugar burner, I mean, a fat burner, and you'll get that metabolic action. And so this whole thing is programming your body to be metabolically active to not be a sugar burner to be a fat burner. And so when you're keeping, when you're looking at calories in, calories out, you're not looking at food as programming your body. You're looking at something as um, just trying to starve your body. You're starving your body of nutrients. You're not telling your body, you're not giving your body nutrients to actually heal. Like, are you, you know, what's your liver look like? If you're putting sugar in your body, your liver is unhealthy and you're going to have fatty liver. That doesn't help you lose weight. That keeps you inflamed. And so this whole process, what you really want to look at, and this is sometimes overlooked and undertold, is that when you actually do this process and turn yourself into a fat burner, what you're actually doing when you flip that sugar switch off, you flip your disease causing genes switch off. You're practicing epigenetics. You actually have the control to reverse obesity. I heard someone say obesity is... is, is um, is a disease and you can't reverse it. I reversed obesity. My brother reversed, you know, reversed obesity. You have to choose to do it, but if you can't do it as a sugar burner. So if you're looking at calories in, calories out, you will not, you might lose weight. You're going to always be hungry, but you'll never turn off your disease causing switch by doing that process. And so you want to look beyond that. What is the actual benefit of food as information to your body when you go beyond that? And so you want to look at it as a whole body hack turn off the disease causing genes in your body, reverse your obesity, and you reverse your risk for diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all of that. I don't have any of it. I'm not on any medications. I don't have any disease in my body. I have no pain in my body. I just celebrated my 60th birthday last year, walking rim to rim at the Grand Canyon, 24 miles. It took me 14 hours. I didn't do it swiftly, but I did it. I felt amazing at the end of the day. I did have a little bit of knee pain, so I did kind of like wear my knees out. But, you know, they were, they healed up pretty quick. And, but, but the thing is, I mean, my legs were tired, but I felt amazing. Savage. And, and within 48 hours, I was back to normal. And so that's, you know, all good. And so when you want to look at this as not a weight loss process per se, like a diet, you want to create a lifestyle where you're stronger, where the weight comes off naturally, where sustainable weight loss, where you never have to gain it back again. I'm never going to gain this weight back again. Because, and that's the other thing, if you're looking at trying to keep your calories low, natural, when you go back to eating the ancestral way naturally, you only eat like two meals a day, if maybe one, if you're busy, if you're not hungry, you don't overeat. And that's how you keep your calories down without looking at it as a calories in, calories out approach. 
which doesn't work because Dave Asprey tried that for a whole year, 360 days out of the year, and he documented it. He ate vegetarian salads, exercised every day for an hour and didn't lose a pound. Yeah. It doesn't work. <laughs> Diets don't work. Yeah. That's what I discovered. I have obesity gene, you know, and you can, you can flip it off. You do not have to express it. Yep. It's so cool that you can do this. I lost one sister to 400 pounds and she passed away, you know, by 65. Our dad died from diabetes, kidney disease, and all of that. You know, I didn't know any better at the time, but by the time I got a hold of my brother, I'd already been through FDN. I already knew, let's run the labs. I said, no, you can't eat that. Let's do this. Showed him his food sensitivity test. He's like, okay, all I got to do is eat what's in the green. He doesn't have any diabetes. He doesn't, he's not on any medication. He's off all medications down to his weight loss. And so if you go to my Instagram, you can see his pictures. And he was walking death. And he would have the same thing. He would not be alive today Wow. because it, it, he would have succumbed. I mean, if you're over 300 pounds as a white male, you're on your deathbed. Yeah. You just don't know it. Wow. And so you could flip that disease off, turn off those disease causing genes. And so this is beyond weight loss. You do not want to go into this as a woman over 50 looking at how can I lose my belly fat? You want to understand that stubborn weight gain is insulin resistance, a blood sugar dysregulation, a broken metabolism, and how can you fix it so that you can live your best life into your hundreds? You can dance upright in your 90s and watch your great gang, grandkids grow, and you can get up and off the ground. You can get down on the ground, and you get up off the ground. Yep. Yep. So we could all do this, but it's a choice. Wow. Well, Lori, it's so interesting that you mentioned Sean O'Mara earlier in this conversation. I was actually thinking about him. I love him. He's yeah. amazing. We've hosted him on the show today. And one of the main, or I'm sure we've hosted him on our show before. One of the main points that he made is the problem we have in society now is the people that are performing are so young, they have no experience. And what you were saying is you were gaining mm -hmm. so much experience and learning so much. That's what you get when you live a life is you get all this experience. But the problem is the way we're aging, now we're not performing. And what we need is we need people that have gone through a lot of experience and are also going rim to rim on their 60th birthdays because okay. that's what we're supposed to do like i heard a saying once that's like don't listen to anybody who wants to talk about nutrition who isn't at least 40 years old like 20 year olds out there giving people advice about what to eat is like you haven't lived you have no idea what life is like just yet like you need to get that experience and so i was thinking that in the back of my head and then you brought it up so i'm really glad you brought him up i, I think that's a you wonderful know, way to think about and aging. i also think of that too because you know my brother would also say you know what we you know um Let's use the example of Paul Saladino, amazing person, great health, doing what he needs to do for his body. And that's amazing. I mean, if you're young like him, you might be able to bring in 300 grams of carbohydrates with that honey and fruit. I told my brother, I said, no, you cannot do that. That's not your health. And if, and I was explaining that to a client, if you have insulin resistance, it doesn't matter. And if you have food sensitivities for wheat and dairy, and you have a gut test in front of us that's showing your antigen response and inflammation in your body, even if you're intermittent fasting and trying to have a little bit of cake because the glucose goddess says you can have some cake and it won't raise your blood sugar, this is not going to support you and your goals if your food sensitivities are showing otherwise and you show inflammation in your body and that's going to increase the inflammatory load on your body. You have to look at it from where you are. When you're healthy, then you can exp experiment with how much fruit, how much sugar or honey you can take in there. If you rebound and your brain shuts off and you start to binge, then you can't have it. You want to look at your body long term. It's like, what can your body do? And what's what, you know, I, I can't even eat blueberries without binging on blueberries. And so I don't want to go there. I choose not to eat the food that I don't want to eat because it hurts my body or causes me to have cravings. Or I'll just gain weight. You know, I'm a woman like any other woman. I don't want to gain weight if I don't have to. If if I'm going to eat food that's going to cause me to crave, crave something, overeat and put on five pounds, I don't want to go there. But I understand because I've educated myself that food is information and I'm not going to eat the foods that are poison my body. I have sensitivity to dairy and wheat and corn. I got the trifecta. All of that turns on inflammatory response in your body. And I could not get the rest of my weight loss until I figured out that I needed to give up more dairy. I couldn't have whey. You know, a lot of people say eat the whey protein to build muscle. I can't have it. And so you can experiment with that. But if you're getting congestion, then that might not be the food that you should have. So I've noticed that in a lot of clients, if they've got congestion in their head, they need to look at how to get rid of the dairy. I ditched my asthma. I don't have any asthma anymore. 
it's gone. I threw my breathing machine out. My, my allergist told me that I will always be on an inhaler. Well, he was wrong, but the standard American person will be. Yep. If, as long as you have inflammation, but if you turn your inflammation off, you turn off the pain. I have a client that just told me she's got 95% less pain in her body, lost an inch and a half off her feet and got new sandals. And she's just totally amazed. And she couldn't walk. And in only five months of working with me since January. Wow. Uh, totally wow. different person. Life, Amazing. you know, reclaimed her life for her retirement. You know, and you just don't know. You know, and it's scary to get started. But if you do it by yourself, it's going to take a lot longer. She did it in four months. Wow. A four months to get her life back. Yeah. That's all it took. So worth it. And that, okay, that is a perfect segue to what I really wanted to talk to you about today as well. Um, you know, we have, we have guests on the show that come on and say like testing and different tools and all these things that we have, like they're not really necessary. You don't need them. You can do your own experimentation. I appreciate that. I also think that if you've got the resources and you can do some of these things, it's going to save you a bunch of time. Like you, you don't have to like kind of swim around and, and try to figure things out and, and, you know, and test on yourself. It might take 10 years or as long as it took you to figure things exactly. out where the testing can show you a little bit sooner. And we've also had guests on the show come on and say that the food sensitivity test in particular, is just, it's stupid. And they just kind of leave it at know. that. And so I would love to hear what you think about that. I think it's, it's an immense tool. And it's, um, if you're sensitive to wheat and dairy and you're thinking you could eat wheat and dairy, you're going to have an inflammation and you're never going to ditch the inflammation. You'll still have asthma. And so I don't have asthma because I took out my food sensitivity. So you need to know exactly what you're sensitive to. And then you need to heal and seal the gut. And so it's information. It's like taking your car in, looking under the hood and seeing what's going on in your car and let's fix it. And so like I was working with this client, okay, she wants to eat cake, but I'm like, you have wheat sensitivity and you have insulin resistance. If you eat that cake, it's going to make you sick. You're not going to get healthy to lose the weight. You'll lose the weight and then it will rebound. And so when you know your food sensitivities, you turn off the inflammation in your body and then you can take that. You know, you have to take it out for three to six months specifically. You know, you take out your yellows and your reds for three to six months or longer. And if you're sensitive to wheat, you don't ever want to bring it back because it's damaging your gut. And if you damage your gut and 80% of your immune system is in the gut, then you're never going to get the health that you want and your brain won't function. And so I just had a client that was keto carnivore for five years. She's not pulling, she was not getting the fat, to, um, she had low total bile acids. She was not getting enough fat for her body to digest her food. And um, there's protein dysbiosis, fat dysbiosis. You could look for those in the labs too. See, when you run them all together, like I run five or six labs and I look at all the hidden healing opportunities and discover where the weight loss blocks are. And then I kind of support the whole body going forward. And then, so if you have stomach dysfunction and you have H. pylori and most people have low stomach acid, then you're not digesting your minerals. You're not digesting your protein. You have protein putrefaction. Your liver is inflamed. You can see all of these on the test that FDN runs. All of that is showing. And if you have low total bile acids and you're not digesting your fat, you could be having gallbladder dysfunction. You have stagnant. Um, when you have stagnant bile, you're not digesting your food. You're not detoxifying. All of these women that I've been doing tests on have has high beta glucuronidase, which is the estrogen detoxification process in the in the gut. It's not functioning. There's liver inflammation. If the food you're eating is causing liver inflammation or colon inflammation, wouldn't you want to know what your food sensitivities are? Because it starts with your food sensitivities, your um, stomach acid, and whether or not you've got a parasite or any H. pylori in your stomach. 50% of the population has H. pylori. That's a tough bugger to get rid of. That 50, means you have low stomach acid. 50%. And you have downstream dysfunction in your gut and you have colon inflammation because of it, all of it, just from that. 50%. 50%. Five zero. Wow, that's really prevalent. Hmm. Wow. I think it's 80% worldwide. And it's, well, it's contagious because if you've got a partner who's got it, then you're going to be passing it back and forth. So you both have to be treated. Interesting. I did not know that. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, so and on, it's not always easy to get rid of. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, um, we've, we've been talking about the hack your health conference completely unrelated, but there's a new do Netflix documentary that came out recently called hack your health, same name again, no association between the two. And it is all about gut health. I, I, 
the thing I know about gut health is that it's really important and that's about all I know about it. It's very, very important. And which <laughs> bugs and the diversity was like the main thing that you want a wide ver a variety of different bugs. That's the best thing. A diverse microbiome. Other people in the carnivore space say, well, if you're only eating a few things, you don't need the micro diversity of lots of different bugs. T tell us a little bit about what you know about the microbiome and things that we can be focusing on to help optimize that. Right. So, I mean, that is still a, an emerging field of trying to understand, you know, between low carb and keto as to how much gut health do we need. And I think it's individual, which is why it's always so confusing as well, because I just um, ran a second GI map test with a client who's doing a retest. So she's showing better on her pancreas. She's got better pancreatic function. She's showing better autoimmune bacteria. And she's so I can see exactly what her bacteria is doing. So I can see a lot of changes that are good. But then there's also she needs to shift her bacteria a little bit. She needs to bring in a probiotic and shift it because it went a little too low. And so a lot of the times, well, there's a bacteria in there called acromancia. And it's the mucus loving acromancia and it creates health. And so we want a mucus layer. But if we don't have the right amount of acromancia to get in there and housekeep for us, it might eat you because there's not enough mucus. And so we want to feed acromancia polyphenols. And so the whole idea is to get polyphenols into our body. Functional health wise, that helps you have a better gut health. So now I still don't quite understand how being full carnivore manages that gut. So that's something I am still trying to put in my brain and understand fully. But I do know that we can look at the gut and we could actually bring in the right foods to help manage it. So there's two phylas. We have like Firmicutes, which is your fat bacteria, and your Bacteroides, which I call the skinny bacteria. And so when we eat sugar, we feed the fat bacteria. Just keep that simple. And so when you're eating more sugar and processed carbs, what you're doing is feeding candida, the fungus. You're going to have higher sugar cravings because that fat, bac the fat bacteria and the candida want that sugar. And so then you will crave more because of those bacteria. When you eat more of a low carb diet, you're actually feeding the bacteroides, which is your skinny bacteria. And they like fat. They like, um, they like butter. They like butyric acid. They like short chain fatty acids. So when you drink olive oil, eat olives, eat the um, collagen. Collagen is a prebiotic fiber. So when you're on a carnivore diet, they're getting more collagen. Usually on a carnivore diet, you don't want to just eat meat only. You want to make sure you're eating the whole animal. That's what I understand. When you get the whole animal, you, like my cat ate that whole bunny, just absorbed it into his body. So he got all the skin. He got what was in the stomach. He got um, all all of the um, the heart everything but the bunny he doesn't like the bunny tail but he ate everything else <laughs> so when you eat nose to tail you'll get all of the nutrients that are going into your gut to kind of program the bacteria to do what they need to do and so that's where the balance comes in some people are need to take it all out if they're reacting to vegetables when they take it all out their body can reset and other people have detoxification issues where you need from what I'm understanding and looking at the test where you can use things like broccoli to program your body to detoxify and correct the estrobilome, the estrobilome, correct beta glucuronidase and, and get your body to detox because there's inflammation in the gut. And so you could either bring in the vegetables to do that, or you completely take everything out and let your body naturally manage it. But the whole idea from what I understand is we need the short chain fatty acids. We need the butyric acid. We need to create short chain fatty acids for our gut to heal. Some people can do it on carnivore and maybe some people can't. It just depends on each person, I think. Because I've heard of other carnivores say, you know, oh, you know, I, I did that, but now I need to be more keto. Why do they need to be more keto? They need something in their gut to manage it. So each person is going to be a little bit different. And I think that that's also going to, you know, manage your... Um, you know, we, we want to manage our, our um, calcium absorption so that we don't have osteoporosis. We want to manage our brain health. You know, what's going to make your body and your brain function for each individual person along an ancestral health process? That's how I look at it. I kind of look at the whole body and what does the body need? And what can you tolerate? If you do better without the vegetables, then that might work for you. Do you do better with some vegetables? Like right now, I'm I'm doing um, a metal detox. I ran an HTMA, which is a hair tissue mineral analysis. And I um, was using some zeolite. I would had diarrhea for like a couple of years, but I've been I've been dumping metals as I cor correct my adrenals and my mineral levels. 
I'm throwing metal out of my body. So every time I throw metal out of my body, I end up with diarrhea. So all of a sudden I had diarrhea again. I'm like, oh my God, really? I've been taking zeolite for, you know, and I'm like, I thought it stopped working. All of a sudden, because I've got it in front of me right here. All of a sudden, my calcium shell's down. I'm down to 80 and I've been stuck up over to almost 300. And so that's when it's a 300, it's like a calcium shell. And so these are how the tests can really show you what you need to do. So I'm working on my mineral balance, absorbing my calcium. As I get my salt potassium up, my calcium comes down, but my aluminum has been causing my calcium to go up. So now I'm mo mo mobilizing mercury, cadmium, aluminum, and nickel and throwing it out of my body. And it's coming out through my hair, but now my calcium's down. And now I can absorb calcium into my body. But you can't do that by taking calcium if it's stuck, if it's not, if the minerals aren't balanced. And so those are some of the things that you could see on the lab work. So you can you can collapse the time it takes to get healthy by running specific labs, you know, and there's, you know, you could just do it like I did initially, which was just take out the low carb foods and let your body get into balance. But it took me eight years because I didn't know what I didn't know. I had to learn it. Yeah. I had to live it. And so you can collapse the time and run these tests and get better results quicker and get your life back on track sooner. So you can be more empowered at work. I helped somebody. Um, she said I saved her life. She did my program. We worked together for eight years, eight months. I'm sorry, eight months. And she saved the contract at her work. She could focus. She was no longer triggered. She had bipolarism. She was able to um, push through without worrying about food. She was no longer triggered by food. And she could work longer, work faster, think better. She saved her program and she got, you know, now she's like able to have more money, support herself more thoroughly and not, and then what she wanted was freedom in retirement. She wanted to be able to be a more empowered worker, you know, a professional who can empower herself to work longer so she could support herself because her lab works, you know, show a lot of dysfunction. You could see what was wrong and what she needed to correct, but she had to get the weight out of her diet. It was really hard for her. Yeah. It's so but interesting. she was doing it. And like we said earlier, like there are some people out there and maybe some people listening who really to start out with a bunch of diagnostic diagnostic tests, it might be financially challenging for them. But equally, mm -hmm. if this is your goal and you want to improve your health, I would also like to know what is your car payment or how much do you spend on eating out in a day? And like how it's much a thousand you... dollars for for tires? You oh, know? my goodness. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like like there's other ways to prioritize. You know, it's, I call it a staycation. It's like a health adventure staycation. Take and I've had a lot of women say, you know what, I'm not. I'm just going to stay home for six months and take care of myself. And you can plan a vacation next year. Well, what if you could have the best body, lose twenty to fifty pounds, and get your health and have energy? I mean, if you're not walking and if your body is in pain, what do you, what can you do? If you could run the labs and find out what's going on in your body and correct it and fix your digestion, so that you can. So when you're 60, you can walk across the Grand Canyon. I mean, you want to fix your body so it works. We could live to our hundreds, but if we have to take away the interferences, like with that food sensitivity test, I've got clients that are sensitive to beef. I've heard about if you're sensitive to beef and you're on a car carnivore keto diet, you need to know that. And so you need to heal and seal your gut and correct your gut so that you could actually bring beef back in. But if you want, if you need to switch to deer or elk or bison, so you could lower inflammation in the next three to six months so you can get your body less pain, you know, have less antigen load on your body. That's foundational. So for people who say you don't need it, you know, that's just that's their point of view. But I've got the lived experience and I work with obesity. And when my clients see what their food sensitivities are and can change the pain in their body by taking it out, one client had foot pain was gone in nine days wow. when she started my program. You know, and like I was saying, the other clients start in January, 95 percent less pain in your body. That's what you get. So this is what I call turning up the pain of inflammation in your body. I don't have asthma anymore. I don't have any pain in my body. I had degenerating knees. It's all gone. You can make your body what you want it to be by flipping the sugar switch off, turning off the disease causing gene in your body and reducing and reversing obesity. You want to take the visceral fat away from your heart, take it off your face, make, get yourself to look more attractive, feel better in your body. Yep. You can go shopping. And then go on that vacation yeah, and you'll actually appreciate it. Exactly. And that's what people need to think about. You know, can you get your body on track? Let do the staycation. Put yourself in a health, ex, you know, a health adventure experience for a weight loss and diabetes solution. Six to eight months and you, you know, six months, you get your life back.
six months. That's all it takes. So amazing. That's so amazing. Well, we have just provided all the listeners and watchers about two hours of content in one hour's time because both of us are so <laughs> excited and talk a bit fast. And that's great. Lori, this has been an amazing conversation. I've really appreciated your points of view on things. I love hearing about your story. And I love the way that you're working with your clients and the stories of your clients getting amazing results. I just, I can't get enough oh, yeah. of that And kind I know of stuff. this is um, mostly talking, but I did want to show this picture. If you can see it, if you're on um, YouTube, yeah. but this was me. That's crazy. And that does not look like about, you at all. That was about 200 pounds. I was higher than that. But um, I just, you know, the thing that we want to look back at is how can we get excited to make the change? If you have the right direction to go, I mean, if you're going to go on a tour in, in Europe, you know, you want to want to be on a tour so that you have the, uh, a guide to tell you where to go so that you don't end up lost. And so the same thing with getting in a lifestyle change and to work through a weight loss lifestyle that you want to create is to hang out with somebody who can help you do it faster and so that you don't get lost and that you can, you know, you know what to do. So like I said, I've got, I've got the puzzle in my brain. I've been filling it in for years, my whole life. So I know what works for diabetes. I know what works for obesity and I know what works for women over 50. And I know how to balance the fat and the protein because everybody's going to be different. But if, like you said, if you're talking to someone who's younger and they're telling you not to eat any fat, that may not work for a woman over 50. That's right. You know, it just depends on what your body can tolerate. Some people, like I had I had one um, friend, she um, was empowered, did everything I said, did a bulletproof coffee, followed Jason Fung, binge watched all his stuff. And um, she, she had walked the Grand Canyon with me one time, excruciating knee pain. Called me up one April and said, Lori, I just lost 40 pounds. I'm like, what did you do? She goes, I've been watching, listening to uh, Jason Fung. And I, you know, I've been OMAD and I lost the weight. So 50 pounds came off really fast for her and that worked for her. And so everybody's going to be different. Not everybody can do it that fast. Some people have to correct what's going on in the body. Yeah, well, that's amazing. And you would be an amazing guide for all of our listeners out there who want to get more information. Where can people go to find you and connect with you and your work? Yeah, so my website, as you were saying, is Lori, L-O-R-I-B-A-L-U-E, LoriBlue.com. And so you can find me. I'm the only Lori Blue out there. And I am on YouTube. I have a viral video you might want to listen to. It's super exciting. The women out there were totally empowered by it. And it's um, my YouTube station is Lori Blue Weight Loss for, I think it's um, holistic low carb for women over 50. And then I'm on, you know, I have a... Uh, a Facebook private group that's also just tag me at Lori Blue and I'll give you the tag for it. But it's basically holistic, low carb weight loss and diabetes solution for women over 50. Maybe it's a little too long, but that's what I had titled it. And then I'm on Instagram all the time. I'm out there trying to empower you, inspire you with reels. All of this comes from my heart. I got the lived experience. <clears throat> I understand what it feels like. I know we're worried and overwhelmed about everything. Like you said, there's so much information out there. But when you work with, you know, like me or you, we know how to fine tune it because we've been through it. We understand and listen to all the experts. And when you listen to everything and take your lived experience, I can then say, no, you can't do this because you have insulin resistance. Let's fix the insulin resistance. Let's fix your blood sugar. Let's fix your metabolism. And then you double check to see what you can do in six months. If you want to do that in six months, you might like the body you have and don't want to go back to the body you had. You know, you have to you have to make the change. You have to get out of feeling uncomfortable and figure out what comfortable feels like before you could finally make the change to not want to go back to the foods that were poisoning your body. People just don't know that they could feel better. But that's what, you know, that's what I'm here for, to help you feel better. Yeah, that's perfect. It's so interesting, too, all the people that do end up going this way. It feels like a terrible sacrifice in the beginning. And then they go back and do a cheat or something and have some of the foods they had before. And it didn't even taste good. It wasn't even, like, worth it. <laughs> no, no. But the thing is, that's why the food sensitivities test is so powerful, because you can see it in black and white. And you know that the foods that you can be reacting to. But the same thing is, too, is um, you can have those same food taste change and once you change the bacteria from fat bacteria to skinny bacteria you change the taste that they have and so they no longer force you to eat the other foods and you can say no more readily so when you get out of the food addiction process you're able to make the decision because at that point when people say i can't do that because i i want to eat my pasta or i need to eat this that's the bacteria talking that's the hormonal reaction you that's your food addiction talking you could still eat a, a protein pizza 
you can still have the flavor of pizza. You just make it keto. Make everything keto. That's all you got to do. Get a cookbook. Make things keto. Get excited. Get out of the. You got to ditch the food sensitivities. I mean, you got to get. If you're addicted to these foods, you got to remember you were addicted to the foods. They make you feel good, but they are an addiction no different than alcohol. Sugar went around the earth faster than any substance on this earth. That's right. It is highly addictive. Rats that are addicted to co cocaine will eat sugar before they eat that cocaine. It is a drug. It looks like a drug side by side. It is white poison. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Lori, this yeah. has been amazing. Again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy Welcome. life and bringing so much energy and education to this conversation. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so very much for everything you do. We'll be sure to tag everything. And again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this. Really, really appreciate you. It was really fun. It was really appreciate fun. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And this has been another episode of Balanced Body Radio. Thank you so very much for listening to and supporting Boundless Body Radio. This podcast is such a passion of mine, one of my favorite parts about running our business, and none of this would be possible without our incredible guests and listeners like yourself. Thank you so, so very much for all of the amazing reviews that we get on Apple and Spotify. Trust me, we read them all, and it means the world to hear that you are enjoying the show as well. I am very excited to announce that this summer, I will be hosting a nutrition seminar series. This is actually a project that I started after I became certified as a nutrition coach. I wanted to get a group of people together to discuss all aspects of human nutrition. And as a bonus, I did the whole thing outside by a pool, which was great. After the pandemic, I stopped hosting the series, but this year I've decided to bring it back. Each week, we'll have a particular topic and an agenda. We'll have outlines that include references and also meal plans, guest appearances, book giveaways, and more all for free. For those of you who live in the Salt Lake City area, the seminars will be hosted every Tuesday at noon, starting on May 28th, and will run all the way until September 3rd. The seminar will be hosted outside, of course, at the beautiful Bowery Park in Daybreak, where I live. If you're available and in the area, we would absolutely love to see you there. If you are unable to attend, either that day and time does not work for you, or you don't live in the area, good news for you as well, we are going to put all the recordings and post them on YouTube, where you can submit listener questions in the comment section, which we can address in future seminars. I'm also including all of the seminar materials on our website, so you don't have to miss out on the content. My goal is to make a comprehensive yet simple understanding of nutrition so that anybody confused about how they should eat can create a framework for themselves based on their individual goals. As I said, if you're interested in participating, we'd love to have you. If you can't make it into the in-person seminar, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also our website at myboundlessbody.com slash seminar to find all of the resources, videos, and a fun quiz. Either way, thank you as always for listening to Boundless Body Radio.